Welcome back guys to another video don't forget to subscribe and let's started chapter 2 Kanaha Sarutobi compound Naruto kun. Why do you wish to learn wind jutsus at such a young age? The Sandame Hokage asked, looking straight at the blonde, who was lying on the ground at the training area within his clan's compound. He usually took some time to teach the boy a few things when he could. He was surprised when Naruto suddenly asked to be trained in using wind jutsus. He hadn't expected the blonde to demand to armor himself with everything he could hold at this stage. Yes, he did understand that the blonde's desire to protect his mother was greater than anything, but at this stage, he wished for Naruto to live a bit more normally, despite the circumstances that surrounded him. He believed that it was not impossible for Naruto to gain friends and live a happy childhood. It was possible. Naruto just wasn't sold on the idea of exploring the possibilities. Perhaps he should have barred young Itaka from showing Naruto his chakra nature. He'd allowed it to happen because he believed it would quiet the blonde a bit, but that turned out to have the opposite effect. The blonde's chakra coils had developed far earlier than most children. It perhaps had to do with his Jinchuriki status, and as the blonde was willing to train, it wasn't wrong to teach him about chakra. I want to be strong, Jiji, Naruto said, staring at the clear sky. He had to be strong, for his mother. Hiro's inside, looking at Naruto. Sometimes the blonde did wear him out. Yes, I know that. Wind manipulation. Isn't the easiest thing you can do at your age Naruto. Learning to control wind chakra takes years of training and hard work he could remember his own days, staring at a waterfall while trying to cut it. It didn't actually take years to learn the manipulation of wind chakra, it depended on the capacity of the executor's mind to learn. Controlling pure wind was the most difficult. Then isn't it? Only right that I start now if it takes so many years to learn? If I start now, by the time I reach a more mature age, I will be able to manipulate the element, Naruto reasoned with the third. He shouldn't have said that, but he did know how to handle this child. Yes, that would be the most reasonable option, he said, not wanting to deny a straight up fact. However, that is the kind of thing that Rudumbu learn at your age, and I don't want to treat you in the same manner. I don't want you to have the same mentality as Root Umbu and endure the same harsh training Danzo gives them. I really appreciate that, Jiji, Naruto said quietly. You have really treated me well over the years. I don't think I can even imagine you teaching me how to become an emotionless robot like Danzo does with his Root. A rare small smile appeared on his face when those words left his mouth. He could always count on the sand aim to treat him well aside from his mother. This is what it meant being the son of a former Hokage privileged to know more about the inner workings of the village. Minato had lots of things inside his office, secrets, and everything. All of which were not hidden from him by his mother. She didn't seem to mind him making himself comfortable in his father's study, even when she knew he was reading some things he shouldn't. She just didn't allow him anywhere near those kind of S-rank secrets. What Danzo was and did wasn't something that could be classified as S-rank. The third chuckled lightly, well, I wouldn't be living with the will of fire in me if I went to the extreme. Besides, Kushinachan would kill me Naruto smiled, yes, yes, she would he said. Mother can be overprotective sometimes, not that he was complaining about it. He wouldn't have it any other way. Aren't you like her in that regard, Naruto-kun, the Hokage asked, slightly amused by the thought of how both mother and son were overprotective of each other, even so. The fact that Naruto never seemed to notice that he was overprotective of his mother. Well, he was still just a seven-year-old, regardless of how smart he was. Maybe, Naruto said with a shrug. He was never going to openly admit it, nor was his mother. To him, it was only right that he think of his mother's safety all the time. Back on to the matter at hand. I think it is necessary for me to learn all that I can when looking at the environment that surrounds me. I do not disagree with your assessment but you should mind your age as well. Other children your age aren't concerned about their mothers in the way you do. That doesn't mean they don't care, it only means they know their role is to be children and allow their parents to protect them Naruto got up from the ground. He had recovered enough energy from the Taijutsu training the Sandame was teaching him. He couldn't learn Taijutsu from Itaka because the Umbu captain's style went along with his Sherinan. He didn't have those eyes, so the style wouldn't suit him. The blonde sat carefully, legs crossed and looked at the third, who was sitting just away from him. I feel you are saying that I'm acting like an adult, instead of being a child. But you forget that the father is always the head, 
I don't have that the third shook his head slightly, I can never forget that you don't have that Naruto-kun, but your mother isn't a civilian, she is a retired jonin. Don't you always brag about her superior knowledge with seals whenever you get the chance. Even the saying of those words by someone was enough to make him smile. Still, I do what I must for mother, he could only say. If father was here, then the story would be different admittedly, the Sandame Hokage acknowledged with a sad frown. It is unfortunate that Minato passed away at such a young age. He could have been doing a better job than I am maybe, or maybe not, Naruto said. Possibilities are always there. You have your experience to count on. Your physical prowess may be deteriorating, but your mind hasn't. So, it is still arguable. Nevertheless, it is indeed cruel that he pathetically died. He didn't pathetically die, Naruto, the sand aim said firmly. No matter how many times he had to repeat it for Naruto to get it through his head, the sand aim would always have the strength to say it. Minato-kun died a noble death like I always say, in yours and the villagers' perspective, that recorded answer once more. But the Sandame wasn't worried, he knew Naruto's weakness and he would eventually expose it. Have you ever questioned yourself about what you would do in his position? I know if someone threatened your mother you would do anything possible to save her, Minato did. What he believed was best to save his family and the village he had sworn to protect no matter the cost, no matter the pain there are ways he could have gone about that, and still be alive. Giving away his life wasn't a necessity the fact that Naruto didn't actually hate his father for sealing the Kyuubai in him was a relief for Hiruzen and the fact that a part of him understood that he had to protect his village. What Naruto resented from Minato was that he died. There wasn't anything else that Naruto resented about his father. The fact that he died instead of living, heard the blonde more than he was willing to admit. Naruto wanted his father to be there to protect him and his mother, he wanted his father to stand up for his family. What made matters worse was that the very people Minato had died protecting hated him, his father's son. The people had been quick to disregard Minato's wishes in favor of their hatred. Naruto hated that. He resented his father for being too trusting. If the people had accepted him as a hero and didn't make him and his mother's life a misery, there wouldn't be any resentment on Naruto's side. None at all. Your mother told you didn't she? The Seal Minato-kun used allows for you to use the Kyuubai's chakra. The seals that held the Baijuyu in your mother and Mito-sama were meant to to hold it back. What if your father believed that the Uchiha would return once again to Kanaha? The fact that the Uchiha is still alive means that your father failed to kill him. What if he thought the best way to protect his family and Kanaha was to give you the Kyuubai's power? Wouldn't that explain why he chose you and that seal specifically, despite your mother's arguments? Naruto clenched his fists, I have thought of that possibility, he said. Obviously the answer didn't please him given the clenched fists. But nothing can take away from what I have been forced to experience because of his decision the third smiled sadly. Minato's only fault was that he trusted the villagers to see you as a hero. A part of me thought they would. Which is why I honored his wish to tell the people of your status, he said. Nevertheless, I still do believe that your father trusted you, his own son to protect his wife and this village against an enemy he knew he couldn't defeat. His hopes may have been crushed, but I honestly believe he gave you that power to protect what he held dear. That is why he chose to die while you live, this is why I give my time to teach you, so that Minato's other wish comes true Naruto's response was to frown while his mother complex wrestled with reason. The third knew it. This is why even though his umbu had marked Naruto as a flight risk, he still believed that Naruto would change. His mother complex stopped him from adhering to any reasonable conclusion he came up with. If the complex was crushed, Naruto would understand things. But for now, he could hope. No matter how smart he may be, he was still a seven-year-old child. Your mother must believe your father trusted you to carry out his wish as well, using his mother broke all arguments. One would think he was manipulating the boy by using his mother, but this was just the truth and he wanted, no he needed Naruto to understand clearly. I believe this is why she still lives in this village and possibly told you about the seal so that you can understand. Tell me Naruto-kun, do you think your mother resents him? No, Naruto grunted. If anything, she missed him. Perhaps that was another part of the reason he resented his father. I will still train you regardless, the Sandame said. However, if you're going to learn wind manipulation, you're going to have to allow your chakra coils to mature and learn to control your chakra. My reserves are nothing compared to when I was in my prime, 
but I make up for it by using the minimum chakra required for a jetso. This is all thanks to my excellent chakra control Kakashi has said that despite my age, I do possess large amounts of chakra. At this age it can be controllable, however, if it continues to grow as it has been, it'll become hard for me to control it as you do with yours he may be right, but should you learn extensive chakra control at this age, you should be able to control it well as it grows. The problem becomes when you attempt to control chakra that is out of control, the sand aim Hokage said. Naruto nodded, I assumed it may be so, he said. One more thing you'll have to do to continue receiving training from me, the third said. Naruto had a feeling he knew what the third was going to say. He even dreaded the answer as he asked, what? Go to the academy, I will handle all your paperwork yup. This is what he definitely suspected. I don't want to. He whined like the seven year he was. Has your mother spoken to you about the academy? Yes, she has and what did she say? She said she wanted me to join the academy and make friends, Naruto said. The Sandame smiled, do you want to make your mother happy, Naruto-kun? Of course, do you even need to ask? The response came out of the blonde's mouth without even a moment of pause and some firmness. There was no doubt he wanted to make Uzumaki Kushina a happy mother. Join the academy and make friends, Naruto-kun Naruto's response was to frown. You've seen it haven't you? When Suzuki-kun comes back from the academy and tells his mother how well he did, she always smiles at him. Sometimes she even walks him there. If you think I'm pulling one over you, go ask your mother the third added. I know you're not optimistic about making friends, but don't lose hope in the young ones as well Naruto's frown just deepened. I'll speak to her, he said. Good, the third said. Well, today he did a lot of ground work. This was worthy of a treat at the ramen stand. But, first thing first, Naruto-kun, we'll have to go to Suna in two days no doubt it wasn't anything the third Hokage hadn't expected from the blonde. Come on my boy, don't you want to see Tamari-chan? Once more again, Naruto just frowned. It was a year ago when his mother told him that there was some signed agreement between Kanaha and Suna, his mother had participated in it as well. The Agreement was that he was to marry the Yandame Kazakaj's daughter when he turned 18. The agreement had been struck when the Sandame was contemplating allowing him and his mother to take refuge in Suna until things cooled down in the village. He had yet to even reach one year of age when his mother and the Sandame found him a fiancé. The Sandame's reasons were to strengthen Suna's ties with Kanaha. The village doesn't have a lot of allies, despite the village being the strongest in the elemental nations. His mother also feared that since he was hated, he was likely to grow without a girlfriend. So she found the perfect girl, a girl who has a Jinchuriki for a brother. A potential friend, possibly. Last time you went without complaints mother was going. Naruto said, with a shrug. Well, I didn't say she wasn't going this time now did I? Oh dot the Sandame chuckled. He did that on purpose. Definitely. Come on. Let us go get ramen before my clone runs out of chakra xxxx the sand aim couldn't be more ashamed of the village he led as he walked through the streets of Kanaha with his beloved grandson. The looks they were giving the boy were not pleasant. At all. It just downright disgusted him. Minato would be ashamed if he saw how these people treated his own son. The devil even sneaked into his thoughts, putting questions like, if Minato could be given a second chance. Would he still follow the same path even if he knew that Kanaha would once again treat his son this badly? There were so many times that he'd wished that Minato had allowed him to be the one to sacrifice his soul to the Shinigami for the ceiling for the Kyuubai. He had lost his wife that night, and his sons had all grown up. Nobody needed him anymore. As long as Minato had been here, everything would have been okay. He had mentored the young Hokage enough when he first took the post, so he could have handled things well in the aftermath of everything. Perhaps that sacrifice would have made up for all the wrongs he did in his long life. Still, he was here and a young man who had a bright future was dead. Gone along with the creepy wind of October 10th seven years ago. How could these people smile at him and greet him respectfully while simultaneously sending death glares at the poor boy? At least not everyone was that bad, even amongst the civilians. But the majority were bad. Regardless, his ways couldn't let him lose hope in this people ever changing. He believed they would eventually change. Naruto just had to do something good for them to see that they'd been wrong about him. The past wouldn't be erased even if they do change though. Still, there was a big question on whether they would change or not. This is rather unpleasant, isn't it? The third Hokage admitted, 
rather bitterly while looking at the blonde, walking on his right side. Unpleasant. Naruto seemed to ponder on it for a few moments before he shrugged, unpleasant it is, for lack of a better word. I've become used to it nonetheless. The first years were difficult. But like the heat in Suna, once you live there long enough, you grow accustomed to it that it becomes natural, not to say that this feels natural by any means I get what you're saying, Sarutobi said, keeping the mild taste in his tongue. Do you think they'll ever change, Naruto-kun? I stopped asking myself that question when I was five, Jiji, Naruto said. The professor let out a bitter chuckle before he responded, those years were truly bad. At least things have bettered a bit in recent years, he added, do you think it would have been much easier for you if the deal to have you live at Sunagakur with your mother had gone through? Keeping in mind, it would only be temporary. Maybe or maybe not. Logic dictates that it would have been pleasant as those people don't know my Jinchuriki status. But that is that and this is the reality. Dwelling on what could have been doesn't help with anything. Such thoughts plagued my mind in abundance. How would things be like if father was alive? Would they hate me? Would I be running around the village with a smile? Those kind of thoughts did nothing but dish out the misery in a large bowl. The reality of things is that my father is dead, and I resent him for it. Kanaha hates me, and I must learn to live with all that a eh? frown threatened to break free on the Sandame's face, but he suppressed it. We can only hope. That is for you. I have nothing to hope for, Naruto said. When are you going to retire anyway? You're going to be a real grandfather soon enough Dante remind me, the third said. I won't retire until you grow old enough for me to say you are strong enough, the Sandame added. Ruffling up the boy's hair affectionately, Naruto let out a tiny smile, small as it was, it was there, the third noted it with great care. I wouldn't have it any other way Jiji later the Sandame Hokage has always been a pervert. Always. Even when Jiraiya was just a brat, he had been a pervert. However, he has always hid his perverseness from other people because it would be embarrassing. If it wasn't because of the repercussions in waiting, he would even indulge in the peeking his former student does, well he had his crystal ball. That was his secret though. What would people say if they heard that, the professor, god of shinobi, the sandame hokage and kanaha's long-serving cage, was a shameless pervert who giggled in the confines of his office while watching young girls splash water at each other in the hot springs, through his magic ball, when this woman walked into the office, a warm smile painted across her face, lips colored in blue and long red hair that reached down the curvy waist, the Sandame couldn't help himself but stare. Dignity be damned. This woman's beauty begged for his perverted side to look at her in wonder and in all indecent forms he could compute. Ahem, Jiraiya cleared his throat before his sensei started drooling. It was enough that he'd hit on the woman before, now for his sensei to drool over her would be just embarrassing. Nevertheless, it would confirm something, the woman was a beauty. If his sensei could see it, then he had not been wrong. Sensei, not in front of your own student. You're embarrassing me, the toad sage said. A smirk on his face. What was wrong with these men? May thought looking at the third and his former student. The toad sage was already infamous with some women with his books, but she didn't have a problem with them. The third was supposed to be a dignified old man of peace with an image to uphold, but upon her entrance to his office, it had crumbled down and now he was trying to pick up the pieces. The third Hokage looked at Jiraiya with a slight glare. Dante act like a child Jiraiya-kun, he stated before looking back at Mei with a small smile, please take a seat thank you, Hokage-sama, Mei said. And thanks for taking your time to see me. I wasn't sure you'd be willing to talk to me Dante worry about it. The third said smiling, Terumi Mei, leader of the rebel faction. In Kiri's civil war. That is about right. Jiraiya-kun. The Sunan's intel was always reliable. He was just asking for the sake of it. Yes, Jiraiya said with a nod. Mei wasn't surprised. Kiri may be in lockdown because of the war, but some shinobi were truly capable of making the impossible possible. Forgive me, but I'm going to be blunt. Granted you already know who I am, I can safely... Say you know what it is that I came here for. The Sandame nodded, you don't mind if I smoke, do you? He was already lighting up his pipe when he asked. Mei was tempted to say she does mind, but held it back. You require, Kanaha's assistance in the civil war that has crippled Kiri's resources Mei nodded. Why Kanaha, exactly? Jiraiya asked. The Yandame Rakage wouldn't agree to. It without making some outrageous demands, 
Suna isn't in a position to help, and well Iwegakur would rather colonize Kiri than help us. Kanahagakur boasts the finest shinobi and is the strongest of the Great Five. Aside from that, the Sandame has been a long preacher of peace. So because I preach peace you believe I am the easiest to recruit to assist you and wouldn't even make an outrageous demand like other nations, huh? The Sandame said, puffing out some smoke. It sounded a bit bad when he put it like that. I don't mean it like that exactly, May tried to explain herself. The Sandame merely chuckled, waving her off. I understand what you mean, he said before he put away his pipe, his expression turned serious as he leaned against his chair. Speak, he said. May knew what the old man was saying and this was the hardest part, honestly, I have nothing to offer as it stands. We have been making progress against Yagura's forces, but our enemy remains the Mizu cage meaning he controlled most things. However, I do believe that we will win the war. We just need some reinforcements for the final battle. When we win, we'll take over Kiri and start rebuilding it. Then, we can compensate you. You'll also gain an ally who'll never betray you so basically you have nothing but promises without any evidence of it ever being ever fulfilled. This is the shinobi world, signed treaties are nothing more than just pieces of papers. What value do mere words hold, if one can even deny ever saying them? The Sandame asked. May frowned. She hadn't expected the old man to jump into the opportunity to assist her, but she'd thought he would do a bit easy, given his reputation. I know but I'm willing to go through a blood oath to prove that I will come through to my promise the Sandame just stared at May for a couple of moments. The woman couldn't even begin to guess what it was that was going inside his head, his mask was unreadable. How desperate are you? Excuse me, you came here with nothing but words, yet still expect me to risk the lives of my shinobi to help you I just believe that there are still some good people in this world. It may be corrupted to the core, but a part of me believes that not everyone is bad. Do you think I'm wrong to have such hopes, Hokage-sama? That Sandame smiled as he spoke. Not at all, he said. His serious mask returned, tell me about the current Mizu cage, what is wrong with him? I know this may sound as an accusation to the Uchiha clan, but we believe without a doubt that Yagura is being manipulated by a powerful Genjutsu, one that can only be cast by the Sherry Non, May said. I see, the third said. It may not look like it but this piece of information was truly important to him. How did you come up with that conclusion, May san? I am afraid I can't tell you that she couldn't tell them that one of her men had one of Kanaha's coveted Jujutsu. Can't he or don't want to? This man wasn't making it easy for her. Well, they didn't call him the professor for nothing. It is a secret that we hold in our ranks. I'm sure you have things in your own ranks that you'd like to keep hidden, yes, but when I'm trying to get someone to help me, without anything to offer, I divulge whatever I can, the Sandame said. Jiraiya just settled for watching his sensei work. The old man was really good with this kind of things. It appears that I was wrong coming here. With how this is going, it doesn't seem like I will get any help. Since I have nothing to offer, who had she been kidding? No one gave anything for free, not in this cruel world of shinobi. There were always strings attached to every deal. Nothing was for free. That is how it seems, the Sandame said. May nodded, thank you for your time, she said ready to leave. But not how it is, the third said before adding. I never said I wouldn't offer my assistant. So, settle down. Tell me, what do you think would happen, say if Onaki hears that I'm assisting you in the war and sends his own shinobi to assist Yagura? May frowned. Kanaha and IWA will end up fighting. Possibly reopen old war wounds I don't need to tell you how badly that will affect us if we end up being dragged into war, having just recently recovered from the Kuabais. Rampage seven years ago, May's frown deepened. If that happened, she wouldn't be able to help out in the ensuing war. I understand, she said. He was saying he really wants to help but the risks were far too great. Every leader had to think for his own people. The Sandame's responsibility wasn't to her people but to Kanaha. I am glad you understand, the Sandame said smiling. How long do you think this final battle will last? May was stunned, a week or two you think you're up to the challenge, Jiraiya-kun. The Toad Sage nodded with a smile, I don't have any complaints as long as I get to stare at her mesmerizing beauty the third chuckled slightly. Good, he said. You have yourself my assistance, May san May was still stunned. He was not only going to offer her his help, he was going to send his strongest shinobi? 
she would have been grateful if he just gave her some fringe shinobi. But a sonin? This was just a miracle. She couldn't help but smile and he prays to her gut for telling her to come to this village. Thank you, Sandame Sama. I didn't expect this Dante thank me yet, Sarutobi said. Return to Kanaha when you have ended. Yagura's blood rain that will be the first thing I do. I hope so, the third said. Would you rather rest or do you wish to leave now? My men can fetch the two you left outside the village May showed no physical reaction to this revelation. The two she left were supposed to be hidden, but apparently the sand aim has great eyes. I have to return to camp right away. It will be dangerous if Yagura becomes aware of my absence understandable, the sand aim said. Jiraiya will catch up to you with the others before you reach C. May nodded and gave her thanks again before leaving. The sand aim didn't escort her out as it would raise suspicion and he wanted to get this done without too much noise about it. Once May was gone, Jiraiya looked at his sensei, Yuri. Not thinking of doing that, are you, sensei? The third merely smiled, do you think this could be the same Uchiha as the one responsible for the Kyuubai's attack? We still don't know if it is really the Sherinan that is manipulating Yagura, yes. It will be best if Itakakun tags along. His Mainjikyo Sherinan should be enough to discern that. If he gets something good, then we may take another step into unmasking this Uchiha Jiraiya nodded in agreement. A few moments of silence settled in before the Toad Sage spoke once more, Sensei, his tone was low, you get along with the Gaki, does he hate me? The third side. Yuri going to have to speak to him eventually. If you're not going to break the ice, Naruto won't bother. Now, I raised you when you were just a brat. Jiraiya-kun. You have grown up now. You raised Minato well. This is something that I cannot help you with. However, I can tell you this, while on this secret mission, speak to Itaka-kun, he understands Naruto-kun. Two hours later Danzo walked into the Sandame's office with a scowl on his face. He clearly didn't like being ordered by Hiruzen. Why did you call me, Hiruzen now now, Danzo? There is no need for such animosity. I did allow you to live after you attempted to get me killed, the third said before getting into the business at hand. I have a mission for your route what? Danzo asked, with narrowed eyes. Kiri's civil war. You're to send your root umbu to fight with the rebels against Yagura's forces. Send them tomorrow morning. I believe you already know the way. You have been keeping tabs on the situation, no. The following day just beside his favorite tree at the park, Ino sat, legs pressed across her chest. When this image registered in his mind, Naruto did nothing but frown as he walked up to her. He didn't want to be here in the first place, he was only here because her mother had asked him to fetch the girl as it was getting late and she wanted to close up the flower shop and return home. He would have said no, but his mother had been there giving him that look that clearly told him to do what was requested of him or there would be consequences. The girl looked sad, and that was something he didn't want to deal with. He had his own problems. Sighing, Naruto sat down beside his fellow blonde, just so you know, I don't care, he said. Before adding, I am just going to ask because if I ignore you, my mother is going to find out and she won't be happy, or you may just use it against me always treat a girl well, Nara-chan, his mother always tells him. He knew she wouldn't smile at him and say you did well if he just ignored a child of a friend in this kind of situation, especially a girl. He didn't understand it. But sometimes his mother would just say he doesn't have to understand but do as he was told and he would eventually understand when he does grow up. He was all grown up at this stage, what was there to understand when he was advanced in age? You recalled, Eno said softly. But then again, Sometimes she did appreciate his honesty. He didn't lie to her, he was always truthful. Even though he was only forced because of his mother's compulsion, he was still doing it and she thanked him for that. Naruto merely shrugged indifferently, what is wrong? Sakura. Hmm. That pink-haired girl you saved a few weeks ago. She registered with the academy and is now in my class. Her father seems to have pulled some strings to get her in. That is not the problem though. We both like Suzuki-kun and decided to terminate our friendship to pursue him and this makes you, what was the right word, again? Sad. Ino nodded, yes. I liked our friendship but now we have become rivals, always throwing insults at each other. Sakura has also made new friends Naruto side. His mother must truly hate him to make him go through such things. What are seven-year-olds doing chasing after Suzuki? What? Do you even mean you like him? You know. How a boy likes a girl, Eno tried explaining. No, 
I don't know, Naruto said. Ino sighed, yeah, you wouldn't. The only person Naruto likes is his mother, she said. So, you really like Suzuki, and this Sakura does as well. Both of you are fighting for his affection, he would really kill someone if he had to compete with them over his mother's affection. This has something to do with what adults call love, but you're just seven. You shouldn't be too worried about such things it could hardly be called love between seven years olds, but he wasn't going to point that out. Says the guy who already has a fiancé Yuri not supposed to talk about such things, Ino Naruto said. How the girl had even got hold of it was beyond him. He wouldn't tell her such things and his mother wouldn't either. Perhaps she had walked into their mothers while they were talking about it. Sorry dot does Suzuki share this crush of yours? Ino frowned slightly, but that was all the answer Naruto needed. My thoughts, get over your stupid crush or destroy your friendship with that girl. What if by some great miracle, Itaki compels Suzuki to tell Sakura that he likes her better? Ino's frown deepened, it would take a miracle because Suzuki-kun likes me keeping telling yourself that, Naruto wanted to say, but the girl would probably tell his mother that he was mean to her. Come on, let's go, he stood and helped her up. Whether a solution was reached or not did not matter. Tsunagakur as soon as the sand aim. Kushina and Naruto made it to the gates of the village hidden in sand, they were greeted by a squad of Umbu. The third had his own Umbu as his guards, just hidden somewhere Naruto couldn't begin to sense. The way towards the village had been rather short as Hiruzen wanted to return to Kanaha as quickly as he could. In his mind, he couldn't leave the village for too long when he had made enemies. With that snake, Danzo, the Warhawk would probably choose to dethrone him in his absence. It was unlikely as he had made sure the root commander sent his root away to Kiri, but it was still a possibility. Hokage Sama, the leader of the Umbu squad said, walking over to the sand aim, please allow us to take you straight to the Kaze cage tower. Yandame Sama has instructed us to do so the third smiled, would it be a problem if we walked? I wish to breathe in some fresh air before my meeting with the Kaze cage. The journey has been a little long, I'm sure Naruto-kun would like to see the change in scenery once again. The Umbu didn't need to think about the matter to offer his response. He merely nodded, we will escort you then. The professor nodded, would it be okay if my umbu take a friendly round about the village? As long as they keep it friendly, there shouldn't be any problem, Hokage Sama the third Hokage looked at his right, Naruto being held by his mother with her right hand. Let's go you two, he said. Is it just me is the weather different from when we were at in the desert? Kushina asked as they slowly walked through the streets of Suna, heading towards the Kaze cage tower with the umbu behind them. It is different, Sarutobi said. The heat isn't as bad as people make it seem. The journey across the desert isn't that bad itself, it is only bad during the windy seasons Kushina nodded, she didn't need to be told that. She already knew that crossing the desert during the windy season was nothing more than to taunt death. She looked at her son, I am so proud of you, you were able to make it to the village without having me to carry you across the desert. Your training is really paying off. Naruto smiled at his mother, thank you he said. There was the fact that the last time he'd come to this village had been his first and, despite being told to prepare for what was ahead, he didn't think it would be so bad. But now he was able to move on his own and knew what to expect. Anything less would have been disappointing, the Sandame said, butting into the conversation. Naruto ought training from four different people, his mother included. Well, children of cages always received the best training they could get from their villages. Minato may be dead, but he was Naruto's father and nothing would change, that. Kushina nodded before smiling, all the better when we return home because he will be starting the academy, she said. Just the thought of her son, strong enough to protect himself against bullies, having some friends of his own, it really made her happy. Perhaps then her son could get the childhood he so deserved. It wasn't too late for him, he was just seven after all. Naruto wanted to frown, but he couldn't not when his mother seemed happy. It was one of those moments that he had to suppress a sarcastic remark about his predicament. His mother was happy that he was going to the academy and may possibly make friends. He should be as well. He could well remember how his mother had picked him up grinning like a fool when he spoke to her about the academy. He'd never seen her so happy and relieved. It was one of those days she would be even willing to let him stay up all night watching TV, if he did that kind of thing. It really meant a lot to her so he had to push on for her happiness. Don't worry too much about it, Naruto-kun, the Sandame said. 
I'll arrange that you be put into a class with the clan heirs. They are smart, Ino-chan is an example. Who knows, you may even get along with with Suzuki-kun while competing for academy honors I doubt it, Naruto said. If I become a competition, Suzuki is likely to see me as a threat Kushina patted Naruto on the back, where is your optimism, Naruto-chan, she asked a bit loudly. What did I tell you? Never say never, Naruto recited those words his mother had beat into him until he could dream. Them. That's the spirit, Kushina said with a nod of her head. Looks like we've finally reached the tower, the Sandame said, looking at the Kaze cage tower. The walk had been pleasant and a good way to kill some time. The leader of the Suna Umbu cleared his throat to catch the attention of the Hokage and those with him. Is he going to sit in as well? He asked, referring to Naruto. The third shook his head, no, not this time, he said. I will take him to the Kazekage's home then, one of the Umbu said, to which Hiruzen nodded. Kushina looked at her son, do you still remember what I told you? Naruto nodded. And, what did I say again? Smile, Naruto said giving his mother a warm smile. Good, now go be a good boy and don't do anything that will give your mother a heart attack, Kushina said. Mother, what would I do that would give you a heart attack? Kushina shrugged. Well, you spend some time with him, she said her left shoulder pointing towards the sand aim. He's like Jiraiya, but he just does it in a closet. Who knows if he's read you that smut, the red-haired sent the sand aim a threatening glare, warning him. Now, now, Kushina-chan, I'm a responsible adult and wouldn't hope to dilute Naruto-kun's mind. Keep it that way, Kushina said. After Naruto was taken away, she returned to normal, come on, let us get this over with. I really hate formal meetings though. Kaze Cage residents Naruto had the decency to raise a brow when he saw to marry. She wore a black kimono, that fitted her perfectly, no lipsticks, just her pure face. The last time he'd come here, she looked normal. This time she looked as though she was preparing for a ceremonial festive. Good impressions? Maybe. Naruto smiled for two reasons, one, his mother, two, both her and him were in a situation that none chose, and he could share some sympathy with her like he does with Itaki. Both he and the Uchiha shared a mindset, protect what is important to their hearts no matter the cost. The only difference was that the precious things to their hearts were different. But both worked zealously for the love, and so they had something in common. Naruto, Tamari greeted the blonde with a somewhat forced smile. Tamari, Naruto said, you look nice, he added as the girl walked him towards the living room. His mother has always told him, always compliment a girl if you want to get in her good books. Thank you, Tamari said. She wanted to be polite and return the favor but the blonde didn't bother to be formal. He just looked normal. But then again, even his mother wore casual clothing the last time she was here like mother like son, so it appears. A thought clicked in her mind that forced her to change directions. You must be hungry from your journey. Food is prepared, how could she have forgotten that? Perhaps this situation made her that uncomfortable. Naruto frowned slightly. He had no choice but accept. Sure, he said. The dining room was spacious, but there was nothing more than a large table and chairs inside it. The food was prepared as she'd said. After settling down, Naruto looked at Tamari, they made you wear that kimono, it wasn't a question, but a statement. Yeah, Tamari said. Her father had been insistent that she look good for Naruto. Obviously, her father was more concerned about the kind of benefit this relationship will do for Sunagakur. Her father always thought of the village and its future. With this contract, he'd secured Suna's future. And he wasn't going to do anything to jeopardize it. Not unless something more valuable came up. Tamari knew that Naruto was the only child of Kanaha's yellow flash. As far as she was concerned, only her, her father and his trusted advisor, Beiki, knew this secret. The council didn't even know of the contract. She guessed it was only a matter of time before they caught the wind of it. Next time. Don't wear it. If anybody says otherwise, tell them Uzumaki Naruto says I look fine just as I am Naruto said with a small smile. Tamari didn't force a smile this time. She gave Naruto a true warm smile, thanks, she truly appreciated the gesture. She didn't hate Naruto because of this, he was nice to her, and the last time he had been very honest with her. How relieved had she been? She was expecting someone older who would be trying tricks on her, but she had been surprised to see someone younger. Itad Akamesu, both said as they prepared to eat their meal. How are you calm about this whole thing? 
Tamari asked. Even last time he looked so calm and relaxed, despite it being their first meeting. My mother was thinking about my well-being when she agreed to it, Naruto said. I can't say the same about my father, Tamari said bitterly. We are in this situation. Either we learn to live with it or remain bitter about it. I would rather choose the former, though. I'm still seven years old, there is still much time to grow around the issue, don't you think? Tamari didn't need to think about it to give a nod. Still, despite saying those words, Naruto had been told by Kakashi that there was a high chance that he may just end up not being with Tamari. The agreement between Suna and Kanaha was between the current cages. Should another cage take over before they are even married, the cage was within his right to declare it void. Since the agreement wasn't public, it was easy for either nation to pull out without fearing a backlash. Besides, the only reason the adults wanted them to know each other now was so that they could develop some bond as his mother had forced another fine print that clearly said, should Uzumaki Naruto be unwilling or having not developed any feelings for Sabaka no to marry, he has the power to say no to the marriage. Still, he would have to pay a hefty fee and offer some sealing scrolls to be allowed to get out of the marriage. Tamari wasn't told of this, and his mother had told him to give it his all. For his own sanity and crumbling hope in humans, he was trying. Two days later moments like these, he really dreaded. The Sandame has tried by all means to make things comfortable for the Uchiha clan just as he has tried with Naruto, but it just seems like all his efforts have been without rewards. He has not been completely useless as Kanaha's third Hokage. Not by any means, but there were things that were happening around Kanaha that seemed to be beyond his reach and control. He really wished that Minato was present at this time. Between the two of them, they could figure things out. He was old. He no longer possessed the influence he once had when he was still sharp, physically. The Uchiha knew of this. From an undeciding Hokage, he learned to decide things for himself, he learned to take the decisions that he wouldn't normally take. This had been forced upon him by the death of Minato and the consequences that followed. Iwegakur had tried sending spies to check on the village's power to see if it could try something, but Danzo had stepped in and dealt with the threats. He was thankful for the Warhawk, a reason he still kept him despite the man having once tried to take his life by attempting to poison Kakashi against him. Naruto was another issue that forced him to step up. He couldn't allow things to get out of hand, lest he wished to live with regrets for the rest of his life. The blonde was a hero in his eyes and he treated him as such. He couldn't force the villagers to offer the same thoughts, but he had ensured that none took their frustrations off the boy. This is a case that he had constantly reminded the villagers that he wasn't called the god of shinobi for nothing. The Sandame Hokage leaned back to his chair, tried by all means to appear strong in the front of Uchiha Fugaka, the head of the Uchiha clan and Kanaha's military police force. There was trouble between Kanaha as a whole and the Uchiha clan. Trouble that could spell disaster if not handled in a careful manner. I hope you kept things tidy in the village while I was away, the Sandame started calmly. Naturally, Achiha Fugaku simply said. My son has been out of the village for a number of days. I usually don't question Umbu missions, but I feel that he was taken away hastily as. He told me he had no upcoming missions, and his squad mates remain in the village. Itakakun has gone on a secret mission with Jireya, the third said calmly. You know that I don't believe for a second that your clan had nothing to do with the Kuabai attack, right? He'd already told the man what he thought, but it didn't stop him from saying it whenever he got the chance. Fugaku gave a subtle nod, unfortunately the same cannot be said for the villagers and the clan heads. His tone was cold, no hatred dripping from it, just silently cold. That is indeed unfortunate, the Sandame said. Despite many assurances to the villagers that your clan had nothing to do with it, they won't believe otherwise. They are hell-bent on blaming someone just as they refuse to accept. Naruto-kun. I only wonder what they will do if they learn that an Uchiha or at least the Sherry Non had manipulated the Kuabai where is this going, Hokage-sama. They'd already been through this and he would rather deal with clan matters than go through this again. Your son has gone on a mission in Kirigakur. We're told that the Yonde Mizu cage is being controlled by a powerful Genjutsu Fugaku took a few moments to digest those words, so you believe that if this is true, then it may be the same Uchiha who manipulated the Kuabai yes, Sarutobi said. If this happens to be true, Itakikun may be able to figure out the identity of this person. With that, 
we may be able to hunt down the culprit and bring him to justice. Perhaps then we will be able to stop the madness going around the village that wouldn't solve the Uchiha's problems. Their problems went far beyond the borders of being untrusted by the villagers. They were pushed away from the village. They no longer had any political power despite operating the police force. That was a matter that needed to be resolved. Fagaku doubted anything would be solved unless they took action though. Things with the villagers have already gone past the line of return. Eyes that all. The third nodded. Can you organize a meeting between your clan elders so we can sit once more again and think of a way to deal with the impending issue? I will see if they are willing. No guarantees given and the Uchiha clan leader disappeared from the office. This doesn't look good at all, the third said. To himself. He could only hope attack it will bring home some good news. He could only hope. Evening. Later that day Kakashi smiled fondly looking at the Kushina through the window from outside where he sat along with a studying Naruto. This reminds me of the time Minato-sensei had me watch over your mother when she was still carrying you. I used to watch her all day long so mother tells me. Naruto responded, flipping a page on the book he was reading. Kakashi sighed. How was your visit in Sunagakur? Surprisingly pleasant, Naruto said. Kakashi gave the blonde a creepy eye smile. Oh, did you and Tamari get to know each other well enough? The tone the Jonin used was enough for Naruto to leave his book and look up to him. The Jonin was suggesting something he couldn't quite figure out. Before he could say anything, his mother's voice burst through the open kitchen window, Kakashi, what are you telling my son? She shouted. Kakashi smiled nervously, well ah, uh, he chuckled nervously. The woman could climb out of the window and give him a chase if he gave the wrong answer. How she had known what he was thinking was a mystery he could never puzzle together. I was just asking how things went in Sunagaku or Kushina gave the man a long stare, you better, she said. Because I swear Kakashi, if you fill my son with lewd things, I will tear off that mask, burn your book collection and make you wear guy's jumpsuit for a month. Do you understand me, Kakashi? Yes, ma'am. Kakashi gave a stiff salute. He was even barred from reading his... Precious Chan in front of Naruto. Not even the sand aim could take out his copy when Naruto was present. Kushina smiled pleasantly, good, she closed the door and went back to her cooking. No wonder Minato-sensei always feared going home when he knew he'd done something she wouldn't like, Kakashi said to himself. He looked back at Naruto, did you meet her siblings? No, Naruto said with a shake of his head. I met them last time. It was just me and Tamari this time. Besides, we didn't say for too long as Jiji said it wasn't safe to leave the village for too long Kakashi nodded, when are you going to see her again? He wanted to be there so that he could spy on them. He was really interested on how Naruto was handling things. Yes, they were just kids. But, he trailed off when he realized that Kushina might just jump out of the window. I don't know, Naruto said, closing his book. He sighed, went silent for a few moments. Looks like I'll be joining the academy that's wonderful Naruto, Kakashi said with a smile. I wish I could walk you on your first day, but I'll be leaving early tomorrow morning for a mission that is fine, Naruto said. Still, Itaki isn't here, you're going away, I'm going to be in the academy. I sense that my training will become hindered don't worry about it, Kakashi said. He took out a scroll from his vest and threw it at Naruto, who caught it. The sand aim told me he told you that you had to do chakra control exercises. He'd given me that scroll on methods I should teach you but I have this mission. So read through it and when I return, we'll pick up from there thanks, Naruto said. Don't worry about it, Kakashi said with another eye smile. The following day notebook, check, lunch, check. Kushina did her checklist as she looked through Naruto's backpack. Do you need chips? Or should I just bring you ramen during lunch time? Naruto sighed, his mother was way over the moon by this situation. He doubted. She even slept at night because of the excitement that was rushing through her blood. It was as though she was the one going to the academy, not him. Everything is in there, Okasan. I don't want you to miss anything on your first day. You have to impress the other kids today, Kushina said. Did you ask Ino-chan if there was homework? Mother, it is my first day. I don't have to write. Homework. And Ino doesn't know I'm going to be joining her class today, Naruto said, taking his school bag from his mother's hands. The crimson scarf she'd bought for him the other day placed safely around his neck. Kushina-chan. Mikato shouted outside their house. Oh, Seiso-chan's mom is here. 
Come on dear, let's go, Kushina said, literally dragging her son out. Naruto didn't mind, it was his mother after all. Hello, Mikato-chan, Seisu-chan, the red-haired Azumaki greeted the two Uchihas. You look bright as always, Seisu she added, pinching the boy on the cheek. Suzuki reddened a bit, while smiling at Kushina. You look full of life as always, the boy said. Mikato looked at Naruto, offered him a smile. Well, this is my surprise, she said. I don't consider it as such, Naruto said. When the surprise come, you'll be shocked can't he wait. The retired Jonin looked at Kushina, let's go. We don't want to be late Suzuki, Naruto grunted, taking the front with the Uchiha while the mothers walked behind, engaged in mother talks. Naruto, Suzuki responded with a grunt of his own. What changed? Oh he was happy with the situation. With the blonde in the academy, he won't have to be worrying about him spending valuable time with Itaki, when that brother of his was not doing any missions. Nothing much, Naruto responded with a shrug. You look excited I can finally get one over you. We're currently tied one to one, you beat me with shuriken throwing while I did better with the fireball jutsu he always did best, he was the best in the academy. Naruto couldn't unseat him. Not when he could do something about it. Yuri keeping score. Naruto looked at the Uchiha from the corner of his eye. He wanted to remind the Uchiha that he humiliated him the last time they sparred in Teijutsu. But if the Uchiha was suffering from selective memory loss, then he wasn't going to remind him. No, Suzuki said. He said nothing further. As they silently made their way towards the academy. When they finally reached the academy gates, Kushina knelt down placed her hands on Naruto's shoulders. Now go on and make your mother proud, okay? I want you to get good grades and don't sleep in class. If anyone tries anything, either student or teacher, call me and I will be there to straighten that person out okay? Yes mother. Good, Kushina said placing a tender kiss on the blonde's forehead. She looked at Suzuki, show him around, will you? Suzuki nodded, let's go, the Uchiha said to Naruto, who looked at his mother for a full minute, unmoving before he finally relented and followed Suzuki. Watching the boys leave, Kushina spoke, I say my son is the best and he will graduate top of his class Mikato. Shook her head, I do agree Naruto is smart, but my Suzuki-kun is a genius. He takes after his older brother are you willing to put a bet on it? Academy oh no, Ino moaned, staring at the entrance of the class, Naruto had just walked in with Suzuki. This was not happening, not to her. How was she going to handle this mess? She definitely has to chose between the two of them. Naruto wouldn't be liked by the fan girls if he stayed close to Suzuki, and she wouldn't be able to do anything to stop them from insulting her black knight. Her mother would expect her to make hang around the blonde. He has bailed her out on a few occasions. It didn't matter that he did it with little care. The effort was what mattered. Besides, she knew he cared a little. He just wouldn't admit it as it would be like betraying his mother. Ino just watched the two boys. Suzuki chose to sit at the front row, but Naruto wasn't going to do any of that. He just looked at Ino, who was staring at him. Surprise, no emotion in his voice. Are you lost? Ino asked. Iruka didn't tell them they would be having a new student today. He had to be lost. She couldn't have him here. It would ruin things. For her as she would have to offer some of her time to him. After all, she couldn't leave her black knight alone. Eyes this Imano Iruka's class. Yes. Then no. I'm not lost, Naruto said. Why? Why are you trying to ruin my perfect academy life? Naruto blinked a couple of times before sighing. Yuri not obligated to spend time with me? Ino of course I am. Naruto just shook his head and went up to the back of the class. He took a seat on the top left corner, and ignored everyone else who was staring at him. The looks weren't of hatred, just curiosity. Understandable since he was joining a class that has already covered more ground. He should be in a lower class, but the Sandame thought this to be best for him as it had his peers. Once the Chinin teacher walked into the class, the question popped up, Iruka-sensei, who's the blonde, a boy asked pointing at Naruto who looked as though he was in a faraway world. Iruka looked at Naruto, stared for a few moments before responded. That is Azumaki Naruto. He will be attending with us from today isnt that unfair. Another kid asked. He was recommended by the Sandame Hokage, Iruka merely said, not bothering to go into detail. Saying he was recommended by the Sandame would stop any questions but at the same time, 
it would give the idea that Naruto was receiving special treatment from the Hokage. Oh well, it didn't matter since he didn't care. Today, we will focus on. After three hours of complete waste of his valuable time, Naruto had been justified in his reservations about the academy being useless. Mother must truly hate me for forcing me to go through this, the blonde said to himself. I hear you, a somewhat tired voice said, just in front of Naruto. The boy who'd spoken, turned slightly to face Naruto. If I ditch, my mother will drag me here by force Naruto nodded. His mother would do something like that. I can see that happening a less troublesome way to get through this is to sleep during class, the boy said, turning away once more. Off to more sleep. A slash and the response was pleasant, better than what I'd hoped. Yes, Naruto has a mother complex. I will address an issue raised by one of the readers questioning Naruto's intelligence, despite the fact that the matter was answered in this chapter, I believe it was made clear in the first chapter that there are two things Naruto hates, Obito and the villagers that make his mother's life a misery yes, it is stated that he does in fact resent his father, but if anyone bothered to read carefully, you'd note that he only resents his father for dying. There is nowhere in the last chapter that says anything about Naruto hating his father for making him a Jinchuriki. You even forget that Naruto is just a seven-year-old. No matter how smart he is, he is still a child. He can't get everything right. Enough with that rant, but I hope that clears things for anyone who had a question along those lines. The knight has nothing to do with being an actual knight. I shouldn't say, but I will anyway. The title is in reference to Naruto's attitude or mindset. As for pairings, I can confirm that Kushina won't be paired with anyone. For Naruto, I don't know. I've actually started this story in a way that I can develop Naruto. Welcome back guys to another video don't forget to subscribe and let's start a chapter 2 Kanaha Sarutobi Compound Naruto-kun. Why do you wish to learn windjutsus at such a young age? The Sandame Hokage asked, looking straight at the blonde who was lying on the ground at the training area within his clan's compound. He usually took some time to teach the boy a few things when he could. He was surprised when Naruto suddenly asked to be trained in using wind jutsus. He hadn't expected the blonde to demand to armor himself with everything he could hold at this stage. Yes, he did understand that the blonde's desire to protect his mother was greater than anything, but at this stage, he wished for Naruto to live a bit more normally despite the circumstances that surrounded him. He believed that it was not impossible for Naruto to gain friends and live a happy childhood. It was possible. Naruto just wasn't sold on the idea of exploring the possibilities. Perhaps he should have barred young Itaka from showing Naruto his chakra nature. He'd allowed it to happen because he believed it would quiet the blonde a bit, but that turned out to have the opposite effect. The blonde's chakra coils had developed far earlier than most children. It perhaps had to do with his Jinchuriki status, and as the blonde was willing to train, it wasn't wrong to teach him about chakra. I want to be strong, Jiji, Naruto said, staring at the clear sky. He had to be strong, for his mother. Here is inside, looking at Naruto. Sometimes the blonde did wear him out. Yes, I know that. Wind manipulation. Isn't the easiest thing you can do at your age, Naruto. Learning to control wind chakra takes years of training and hard work he could remember his own days, staring at a waterfall while trying to cut it. It didn't actually take years to learn the manipulation of wind chakra, it depended on the capacity of the executor's mind to learn. Controlling pure wind was the most difficult. Then isn't it? Only right that I start now if it takes so many years to learn? If I start now, by the time I reach a more mature age, I will be able to manipulate the element. Naruto reasoned with the third. He shouldn't have said that, but he did know how to handle this child. Yes, that would be the most reasonable option, he said, not wanting to deny a straight-up fact. However, that is the kind of thing that Rudumbu learn at your age, and I don't want to treat you in the same manner. I don't want you to have the same mentality as Rudumbu and endure the same harsh training Danzo gives them. I really appreciate that, Jiji, Naruto said quietly. You have really treated me well over the years. I don't think I can even imagine you teaching me how to become an emotionless robot like Danzo does with his root. A rare small smile appeared on his face when those words left his mouth. He could always count on the sand aim to treat him well aside from his mother. This is what it meant being the son of a former Hokage, privileged to know more about the inner workings of the village. Minato had lots of things inside his office, secrets, and everything. All of which were not hidden from him by his mother. 
She didn't seem to mind him making himself comfortable in his father's study, even when she knew he was reading some things he shouldn't. She just didn't allow him anywhere near those kind of S-rank secrets. What Danzo was and did wasn't something that could be classified as S-rank. The third chuckled lightly, well, I wouldn't be living with the will of fire in me if I went to the extreme. Besides, Kushinachan would kill me Naruto smiled, yes, yes, she would he said. Mother can be overprotective sometimes, not that he was complaining about it. He wouldn't have it any other way. Aren't you like her in that regard, Naruto-kun, the Hokage asked, slightly amused by the thought of how both mother and son were overprotective of each other, even so. The fact that Naruto never seemed to notice that he was overprotective of his mother, well, he was still just a seven-year-old, regardless of how smart he was. Maybe, Naruto said with a shrug, he was never going to openly admit it nor was his mother. To him, it was only right that he think of his mother's safety all the time. Back on to the matter at hand. I think it is necessary for me to learn all that I can when looking at the environment that surrounds me. I do not disagree with your assessment, but you should mind your age as well. Other children your age aren't concerned about their mothers in the way you do. That doesn't mean they don't care, it only means they know their role is to be children and allow their parents to protect them. Naruto got up from the ground. He had recovered enough energy from the Taijutsu training the Sandame was teaching him. He couldn't learn Taijutsu from Itaka because the Umbu captain's style went along with his Sherinan. He didn't have those eyes, so the style wouldn't suit him. The blonde sat carefully, legs crossed and looked at the third, who was sitting just away from him. I feel you are saying that I'm acting like an adult, instead of being a child. But you forget that the father is always the head, I don't have that the third shook his head slightly. I can never forget that you don't have that Naruto-kun, but your mother isn't a civilian. She is a retired jonin. Don't you always brag about her superior knowledge with seals whenever you get the chance. Even the saying of those words by someone was enough to make him smile. Still, I do what I must for mother, he could only say. If father was here, then the story would be different admittedly, the Sandame Hokage acknowledged with a sad frown. It is unfortunate that Minato passed away at such a young age. He could have been doing a better job than I am maybe, or maybe not, Naruto said. Possibilities are always there. You have your experience to count on. Your physical prowess may be deteriorating, but your mind hasn't. So, it is still arguable. Nevertheless, it is indeed cruel that he pathetically died. He didn't pathetically die, Naruto, the Sandame said firmly. No matter how many times he had to repeat it for Naruto to get it through his head, the Sandame would always have the strength to say it. Minato-kun died a noble death like I always say, in yours and the villagers' perspective, that recorded answer once more, but the Sandame wasn't worried, he knew Naruto's weakness and he would eventually expose it. Have you ever questioned yourself about what you would do in his position? I know if someone threatened your mother you would do anything possible to save her, Minato did. What he believed was best to save his family and the village he had sworn to protect no matter the cost, no matter the pain there are ways he could have gone about that and still be alive. Giving away his life wasn't a necessity the fact that Naruto didn't actually hate his father for sealing the Kyuubai in him was a relief for Hiruzen and the fact that a part of him understood that he had to protect his village. What Naruto resented from Minato was that he died. There wasn't anything else that Naruto resented about his father. The fact that he died instead of living, hurt the blonde more than he was willing to admit. Naruto wanted his father to be there to protect him and his mother, he wanted his father to stand up for his family. What made matters worse was that the very people Minato had died protecting hated him, his father's son. The people had been quick to disregard Minato's wishes in favor of their hatred. Naruto hated that. He resented his father for being too trusting. If the people had accepted him as a hero and didn't make him and his mother's life a misery, there wouldn't be any resentment on Naruto's side. None at all. Your mother told you didn't she? The Seal Minato-kun used allows for you to use the Kyuubai's chakra. The seals that held the Baijuyu in your mother and Mito-sama were meant to to hold it back. What if your father believed that the Uchiha would return once again to Kanaha? The fact that the Uchiha is still alive means that your father failed to kill him. What if he thought the best way to protect his family and Kanaha was to give you the Kyuubai's power? Wouldn't that explain why he chose you and that seal specifically, despite your mother's arguments? Naruto clenched his fists, I have thought of that possibility, he said. Obviously the answer didn't please him given the clenched fists. 
But nothing can take away from what I have been forced to experience because of his decision the third smiled sadly. Minato's only fault was that he trusted the villagers to see you as a hero, a part of me thought they would. Which is why I honored his wish to tell the people of your status, he said. Nevertheless, I still do believe that your father trusted you, his own son, to protect his wife and this village against an enemy he knew he couldn't defeat. His hopes may have been crushed, but I honestly believe he gave you that power to protect what he held dear. That is why he chose to die while you live, this is why I give my time to 